Uh, our next guest speaker is Professor Dr. Uh, Jose Madrigal. Uh, Dr. Jose is a director of the program Architecture and Urban Design at the German University in Cairo. Uh, leave the mic now with uh, Dr. Jose. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for this kind invitation. Thank you, um, um, all of our dear colleagues today. I am very, very, very thankful to to have received um, this welcome from all of you. And around this uh, round table, I, I like it very much. I would like to have this round table there. Thank in, you. The this, by the way, you know. um, well, I will try. I will try to to do a kind of different uh, presentation. As you can imagine, um, when we are trying to uh, to talk or to reflect about how resilient is or not the architectural education in this in this uh, post uh, uh, COVID uh, pandemic area uh, era. Um, we are in risk to repeat all the same arguments. And, and probably the, the dear audience we have today, by the way, congratulations because of the high number of, um, of um, audience you have today. It's, uh, it's defining very well, very well uh, the capacity of the organization of this uh, institution, this group, as usual, doing the things with uh, with passion, because at the end, maybe the common factor we have all the people we are inside the education is our passion for for these things we are doing every day. So um, I will try not to repeat as I told you, but probably to to fix some points and to define some issues that eventually um, would make the difference. And I would like to be more focused on some of them. Uh, first of all, this image is, in my opinion, uh, the, 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 probably the, the best symbol of our um, era, which is uh, how the, the big auditoriums suddenly are not needed. And suddenly, I, I must tell you that I, I suffered so much when I was giving my lectures in the middle of these auditoriums that it was something like to, to talk the, the wars. And the, these feelings, even from a psychological point of view, all the professors, we suffered, as well as the students, that it was very well remarked by uh, my colleague, who was the, the first one talking about different um, experiences about the um, e-learning or the, or, or the e-teaching too. Well, let's go to, to the point. First of all, I would like to remark that we are not talking about resilience and architectural education, but probably resilience and architectural education. I mean, uh, which kind of architectural education we are trying to give the students and um, which kind of um, differences we can remark. This is why, sure, all of us, we think that uh, we architects are different. We architects are uh, different from other courses. And, and, and we try to reflect this in any, in any of our activities, of course, in teaching. And this is why probably we have suffered so much more difficulties to teach than other uh, theoretical approaches or other theoretical faculties. Of course, we are different, for example, if we are comparing uh, this attitude of the students in Bologna University in the, in, the, in the second half of the 14th century, when they were starting to, to, to teach, and it was a very um, passive attitude from, from the students. Maybe not so much, much more different from these students listening our dear and beloved uh, master of architecture, uh, Mies van der Rohe, when uh, he was teaching in, in that thing that we talk, the um, design studio or the studio culture. And it's true that we are really different, but the question is uh, compared with which kind of uh, teaching, because probably, and I would like to be more focused on the problem of design studios, because these uh, courses are the courses are making the difference when compared with other 
um, <laughs> faculties when compared with other curriculums. But now I would like to, to have a, a short <laughs> overview about the problem of the COVID area for us. I, I, I realized that probably there are two important words as um, keywords that um, probably will define what, it, what we are today experimenting. First of all, the sense of the opportunity, and second, the challenge. And um, in order to try to, 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 be, uh, to, to review some of our ideas, I selected this definition you can find out in the Princeton University School of Architecture, where, curiously, what, uh, what it's defined is the studio culture. And in the end, the studio culture, this, this document is something like the, you know, the, um, the, the, the big manifestation of uh, what is the difference between uh, the, 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 the theoretical courses and our core course, namely design studio or studio culture. And, and it's clear that at the end, uh, the, the, the problem of the studio culture was, became, was starting from this point of view. It's a group of students uh, trying to uh, develop, curiously at the end, uh, looking for a similar, uh, a similar um, goal. At the end, the, the, the difference would be uh, the, the, the different and the several uh, formal proposals, but at the end, all people were looking for the, the, the best solution for a problem which was the, the main topic of the uh, design studio. But at the same time, the most important thing in the study culture, always um, um, taken as a flag from the NAB, um, for all the universities are uh, integrated uh, or are under this philosophy of uh, teaching. This is why I was uh, trying to to, to explain that we have different ways of understanding teaching. For example, NAV, for example, these courses are under the um, umbrella of um, RIBA, or um, um, it depends, all of course, of the different accreditations processes we are following. But it is clear that the studio culture at the end is a, is a kind of um, or it's a kind of a strategy for organizing some specific atmosphere where the students are sharing uh, the, 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 the different uh, purposes, the different goals, and at the end is a mutual or common enrichment. And this is probably the, the most interesting thing pre-COVID. I mean, when we were uh, understanding that the real thing to be followed was the idea of the group, the idea of generating some specific strategies, some specific uh, atmospheres among the students and the TAs and the professors and, and, and that, you know. In the end, it was a kind of transmission of our common passion because of the architecture um, as, a, as a model uh, of life at the end. Well, even being true, there are people that they were contesting clearly this kind of thing. This, this picture and maybe these two uh, questions are probably uh, symbolizing these things. Is a 24-hour studio culture a good thing in the universities? Uh, well, there are people that they think not really, you know, are in, in, in some cases even, you know, are inventions a symptom of a cultural problem in these studios? In the end, uh, uh, where are we obliging the students to be uh, inventors or to be designers? Inventors as, as sometimes even um, difficult um, uh, machineries, difficult artifacts to be understood by the society. And then as, uh, as the, the, the black and white uh, uh, colors, uh, here is the official announcement from the University of New South Wales in Sydney uh, because of the pandemic, just one year ago. The, the, the fact was that suddenly all the, um, the, the in-person classes or the face-to-face -face activities would be stopped. And 
two reactions as black and white again. First of all, the people telling teaching online design studio, oh my God, God save us because how to do that? Suddenly we were facing the, 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 the real problem um, and these kind of things that um, for a long time we are uh, um, tested even by Harvard. I remember very well uh, how Harvard in such moment in the in the beginning of the century uh, uh, started to um, to develop the idea of online courses in design and they uh, rejected at the, at the moment and of course they have re recovered now. This is one attitude. The other attitude is the positive, the optimistic attitude that would be, okay, why not? Let's go ahead. And this is um, the important um, dilemma we have, we are uh, today suffering. Another topic I would like to remark today, it's the communication. How the communication between professors and students and even among students have changed so much. Mm -hmm. You know, probably uh, we will remember that there are a, a typical rule is 73855 okay. as the elements for a personal communication. Okay. And in this case, these, uh, these uh, numbers are more or less as you can see now. 7% 7 7 of, of the message is arriving uh, through spoken words. So it's arriving through the concept. Uh, explain it uh, in an oral way. Curiously, other 38% of this uh, communication is arriving because of the voice or because of the tone. How are we communicating these ideas? But curiously, we have lost 55% of this communication. Why? Because of the body language. You can see how uh, this kind of um, um, even today, these kind of communications, you know, are always done sitting down. Suddenly, we have lost the capacity to move our hands. I am talking now on behalf of the professors and even uh, on behalf of the students when they are some of them perfect sellers of their ideas. Um, and, and this kind of things we lost suddenly. Why? Because I am asking myself, for example, who is teaching the teachers to teach? And this is a real problem we have today. I mean, <laughs> most of us, we have been learning to teach by uh, through our own experiences. There are a very few uh, universities teaching the professors to teach. And this is a kind of contradiction because suddenly we were obliged to start to learn how to teach how to use our own resources, but without a 55% of the body language as, as uh, Albert Meravian uh, defined it uh, 20 years ago. So some limitations, of course, uh, online are appearing and are decreasing the, the capacity of our, our uh, communication through the body language. But there is another important thing talking about communication. Of course, this is the time where the professors are trying to, uh, to meet the, 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 the students and curiously, and this is the important issue we are suffering and we, are, we were suffering before, is when the students were coming, some kind of students are coming to the design studios only to, to, to receive their, you know, the suggestions. The, the corrections. Okay, let me know and I am leaving. So it's something like to go to the hospital to receive the, the medical doctor suggestions and leaving, you know, so waiting there for one hour, uh, an hour, one hour and a half and suddenly in my five minutes I have resolved my problems, bye bye, I am going to home, hopefully to, to work. But curiously the design studio culture is not really uh, what we were practicing. Let us open our eyes and let us uh, um, see if we are so far from these things. Because at the end, and I, I would like to remark, and it's, it's remarked in yellow in this slide, the students are demanding this personal and individual communication. 
and they demand even this exclusive attention for them. After that, probably they are not in the discourse and they are not paying attention and it's uh, repeating. It's the, the same model we are we were doing. It's sometimes repeated in our um, uh, new uh, ways of teaching. Even. But curiously, if we see at, at this uh, um, web page from RIBA, um, where uh, it's announced that the studio teaching falls victim to COVID. And the most important thing is, according to the inquiry done by Bath University uh, Faculty of Architecture, they declared, the students declared that the satisfaction level of this uh, um, studio uh, culture has fallen down by 58%. So something is badly done, something is the problem. Sorry, now I am lost. I don't know what happened, but suddenly, oh yes, yes, it's coming back again. Thank you. The best proof of, of how the professors are, some professors are not well ready for that is I was not able to do that now. <laughs> so, um, Let's go now to the experiences at DUC. I will uh, symbolize these two uh, pictures that they are very, very clear, you know. So on the left, the environment of uh, pre-COVID, on the right, the environment post-COVID. The big difference at this moment is maybe the short, not shorter number of students um, no social distance, by the way, it was impossible to try to convince our dear beloved students, please keep the social distance, even because we are in a culture where the social distance is exactly this one. So we are trying to apply social distances uh, coming from, for example, United Kingdom, when, uh, when we are trying to buy a ticket for the cinema, we are one meter and a half from the other. No. No, here uh, we are not doing this kind of rows or queues for, for buying anything. So we are repeating exactly the same patterns as cities we had. But the masks is the, probably the identity signal of these times, sure. Well, I try to, uh, to resume what happened there at the UC. I will not be uh, of uh, so uh, I will not review in a detail because, but I would like to 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 tell you that there were two important um, um, points where the 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 board of trustees of the university uh, uh, showed us um, their concerns. One of them is uh, uh, to to try to activate a personal way of communication personal platforms and the second one was the safety and curiously I must confess that the safety was against architectural uh, teaching modes because the safety in this case was uh, the main uh, consequence was to lose the possibility to use officially the Zoom platform which probably would be uh, for us maybe one of the most uh, um, interesting platforms because of this uh, capacity to uh, interact uh, in, in time and, and, uh, and this was not possible in the first step. I, I must uh, differentiate between the first and the second steps. Um, so the first lockdown was a very um, hard problem for all of us. Um, no initial preparation from the professors. Uh, a fast training, and especially this kind of uh, skepticism from the staff members. Some of them, I must tell that, I, I think it will be the same thing, you know, the TAs were usually much, much better prepared to deal with these issues. Meanwhile, uh, some of the senior professors uh, suffered so much because of the you know, this kind of lack of relations with uh, new technologies and, and so on. But um, I must tell you that even if I, I have dif uh, differentiated, I have separated here the theory courses from the practical ones. 
So Design Studio will be in the bottom, uh, two uh, bottom rows. Meanwhile, the other ones are the theory courses. And even in the theory courses, I must uh, uh, highlight the low level of participation of the students initially, you know, some disorientation from the students, and especially uh, the, maybe the most important problem would be the, the time management, uh, how uh, the students were not able to manage their timings because of new uh, uh, scenarios were in front of them. And especially after that, this kind of um, lack of possibilities for in the in the theoretical lessons, you know, to 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 have this kind of questions and answers, the the as as the most important uh, uh, point where the uh, communication was done really in the theory courses, in the in the in the practical courses, the design studios. Of course, things were a bit uh, easier when uh, the university provided us um, 11 exclusive channels for architecture. It was practically third of the 33% of the of the channels uh, because the total number was 34. And in this case, uh, things were a bit better. But at the end, the problem was uh, that the the interaction was not exactly. Uh, the reproduction of the studio culture. But um, at the same time, I would like to remark another problem, which would be the passive attitude for some of, by some of the students. I mean, some of the students, uh, for some reasons, they, they were not really adapted to the, to the new times. But these kind of things were, uh, in my opinion, in this second lockdown, were so different. At this moment, I must tell you that the, the participation in the theory courses were better and the participation even uh, um, with some parallel activities um, um, were, um, were increasing in general terms. And especially because of the, the, the capacity of the students to manage better the time and, and to organize themselves through their own agendas. All these things are to, to tell you that at the end, um, of course, this is a hard learning process where we are and probably, I don't know why or I don't know the reason, um, it will be better to have only two lockdowns and to finish here with this pandemic uh, times. But if the third time, if the third lockdown will arrive, sure, we will be even uh, so much better prepared. This is obvious. And the question even it's the blended learning. That's probably one of the, of the better uh, ways to understand how future times will be developed in, in our architectural courses. Opportunities, I told you before, and opportunities are in some cases, for example, what happened in November there in, in, in our uh, architectural program with this uh, Congress where um, uh, 18, or, uh, 18 uh, different countries were represented in the papers in the Agora Kaume 2020, for example. And of course, it was a, a very strange scenario. We can uh, see here how the, the, the executive uh, secretary for the Prisker Prize in the, in, the, in the screen is talking to the flags, you know, as a, a kind of contradiction again, you know, about these things. Meanwhile, 400 people were, of course, uh, attending. But, but in this case, you know, is this kind of black and white again? And especially as a result, the, the, the Agora platform of the schools of architecture and urban design. And this is probably a, a kind invitation even for, for this institution to, to, to join us in this, uh, um, this uh, group of now 44 universities in the Euromed region with 67 professors and hopefully today 45 universities and probably 75 professors from your side. I will be very, very, very happy if these things happen because uh, probably this is the, the point um, that we have 
where we have clearly improved our capacities of interactions, uh, our, our capacities even to create networks. Some personal conclusions. First of all, from my point of view, studio culture, of course, face to face, is probably today a kind of nostalgia or a kind of romanticism. Uh, uh, probably we will not come back exactly in the same conditions, but it's true that sometimes when we see these pictures as uh, the one of uh, from Frank Lloyd Wright teaching to a group of students, maybe we would be very happy to recover this kind of relations and especially this ratio, you know, five students per professor would, would be perfect for all of us. But probably this is not uh, even, this is not our time. And, but when we are going online process, I, I would like, I'm sorry for that, to, 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 to do my SWOT analysis. So sorry for that, you know, because I, I know that these things are so uh, normal. But it's true that uh, as a witnesses, uh, I would like to remark the laws of the traditional studio culture, probably. And the threats, in my opinion, would be the laws of relations between professors and students or at least the change for another kind of relations. Um, I would like to, to, to remark my personal impressions about three topics. First of all, we need to engage in other way to the students. And this is a, a very curious thing because it's a kind of divorce we are suffering. Meanwhile, we think that the students are so far from us, at the same time, the students are opening their homes and suddenly we can see the, the, the bedrooms of the students. Uh, we are invading, we are invading even uh, these uh, sacred spaces or uh, and suddenly we, we are so far. So this is a kind of contradiction and it is very curious, you know. But at the same time, I, um, I, I would like to remind what, what I am doing in, in my case is nothing new because sure, all of you are doing very similar things, but I am obliged to talk about myself. And in this case, for example, the two ways comments, I think they are very important for us. Uh, this is why, for example, I usually am doing the uh, uh, digital submissions one day before the, the, the real presentations as a way to, 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 to have a good advantage from, uh, from the professor of you so we are able to review before what we will see and probably and this is the advantage for the students our comments as professors our suggestions will be more accurate i mean uh, let us confess us that is, it will not be the first time that when we are obliged to see 30 40 exercises during one day or two days uh, and sometimes we are not really brilliant and we have so many things in our minds, but through this kind of uh, um, uh, strategies, we are able to, to, to serve in the best way to our students. And then another topic to reflect on that, the autonomy. I mean, curiously, and this is another kind of uh, contradictions, meanwhile, we are telling the students, well, we are recording our lectures. You are free to, to, to listen or to watch the, our lectures when you like. And the students are, wow, fantastic, you know, when we like. But then the problem they are discovering is a lack of discipline, a lack of uh, rigid timings are maybe the best or the, or the worst enemy for the students. So the students are not, we are not really prepared to have this discipline. And okay, tomorrow when I like, I will watch the lecture. And when I like is maybe instead of eight in the morning, half past 10, etc. But at the same time, the pressure, I, will, I would like to, 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 to do some comments, the pressure, we are suffering because we, the, I, I saw the students, no, I, I cannot uh, do a Zoom with you for seeing the project because tomorrow I have at 10.30, I have one lecture, I don't know, and 9.30, etc. I mean, it's not easy to, to <coughs> resolve. 
there is another problem, which is it's forbidden. The destruction is forbidden. I mean, destruction is 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 in a in a in a second, and this is happening in the in the real life, in face to face, and in of course in the um, in the online uh, because we lose the tie at the end. Um, some questions, final questions. Can I become an architect by studying online? Because probably now the future would be, okay, everything online. Well, <laughs> I went to the Academy of Art University, which is, a, a, and it's a, a, the program is uh, one, uh, is um, accredited by um, NAB. So all the, the very well blessed program, you know, and of course, if we go to the web page, this is a personal and a defense of the online uh, courses. But curiously, I I would like to 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 remark two comments. You know, this is the perfect picture to define this concept of studying online. So suddenly, this new graduate architect is architect. Uh, or a student is completely isolated, completely out of context, probably. So I personally don't think that it is possible to, to be architect online. Or maybe we will be exactly an online architect, which is another kind of architect, in my opinion. But there will be people defending, of course, this system. Why not? What will happen with the professors? Practically exhausted in the middle of all this process. At the end, our word at the end was preparing. Uh, if uh, we have suffered, probably all of us, you know, to prepare a lecture online is one thing. To prepare a lecture for for having a face to face is another thing. We are spending at the moment so much time, probably because of lack of. Uh, um, training. Probably in the future things will be uh, easier. But at the moment, uh, this pattern or this model of professor completely exhausted and uh, closed uh, among these four walls is what we have today. So I promise you do not uh, talk so much um, and especially do not uh, have here the space for the advertisement for my university, because this is not the, the, the reason why I am here, but it was a, a nice opportunity for me to share some reflections and especially to share some concerns. Thank you very much for your time, for passing. Thank you, Dr. Jose, for your profound and deep analysis for the online education and how it could be useful, especially at this time and the circumstances caused by COVID-19. I hope all my colleagues and the students